Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Hustle today. So today I have another special guest for you. Today I'm really happy to introduce this guest to you. Why? Because when women make money in the market in times of pandemic, when they earn livelihood, it is really interesting to see when they go out, when they reach out to the people in general, to brands, and they they pitch their services, their potential, their talent, their skill. It's really interesting to watch and to learn from and to get inspired from. So today I have Shweta from Bat6 for you. She has been working as a content writer for several skincare and beauty brands. There are two or three national and international brands. Uh, of course, she cannot name all of them, but this is what she has been doing. Before this, she was a graphic designer, but after the internship program, she got all the lessons and she started applying them, reaching out to brands. And then now she's working as a content writer. So there's a lot more to learn from her, how she did, what she's doing, and she's making some 50,000 rupees a month already. So without further ado, just let, let's just add her to the call and have a conversation with her. Hello, Shweta. How are you? Hi, Divya. I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Nice to see you. Same year. Almost a year since Bat6 got over and uh, everybody has gone their ways doing things. Yes, so, yes, I did. Very excited to meet you. Yeah, I was also very excited to talk to you after such long time. <laughs> <laughs> very true. Yeah. So what are you doing currently? Uh, currently, I'm working as a freelance content writer. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm writing for different uh, beauty and cosmetic brands. Uh, some are national brands, uh, some are Indian brands, some are international brands. Okay, nice. So what has been the experience and how long have you been doing this? Uh, the experience has been very thrilling. And uh, I've, do, I've been doing this uh, since I started my journey with uh, DDIP. Before that, I was uh, blogging uh, as a skincare uh, blogger, uh, mostly about cruelty-free skincare. And uh, after... Uh, Finishing uh, my DDIP journey, I started working as a freelance content writer. So you said something about the experience. How was the experience you said? It was quite thrilling. Okay, thrilling. Okay. <laughs> thrilling. Okay, yeah. nice. So can you tell me more about it? What was that thrill element in it, the ups and downs? Uh, yes. Like, uh, uh, I, I was already working as a skincare blogger. So okay. I had the... Uh, uh, few ideas about like skincare and uh, everything okay so mm -hmm. uh, i had already written few articles on skincare mm -hmm. but writing for your own blog and writing for others is a very different experience True. okay yeah and approaching clients uh, cold emailing them then following up with the emails it's all very different experience for me as a writer Mm, okay, as a writer, I was only focused on uh, writing material. Okay, structuring the uh, structuring and then organizing only write ups articles. Okay, but uh, when you are working as a freelancer, uh, you have to go through this whole thing like uh, approaching clients, emailing them, and then sending them samples of your writing. Okay, mm. again, then negotiation is again the part of the journey. So yeah, the whole thing was very exciting and free. Apart from that, even when you deliver the work, because I have worked as a freelance content writer myself, uh, I have learned not to say the word freelance yesterday. It should be a consultant or marketing or a, say a writer. So anyways, um, I was a writer myself and uh, I know what it feels like. So when you deliver the work, a lot of times the work has to be edited. There has to be some changes, revisions. So you also have those, you know, this negotiating aspect there that how many revisions, these many revisions, and then how much will you charge for the revisions, et cetera, et cetera. So there are a lot of things in there. Yes. Uh, that's why uh, what I do, like, uh, while pitching only, uh, I tell clients, like, we'll do this, uh, like, we structure it like this, we'll mm -hmm. do this, and you will get to do one or two revisions. Mm -hmm. That's it, like, Nice. So before you started all of this, um, you I, I'm just aware in, as a hint because of my interactions with you previously, you were a graphic designer, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, can you tell me more about that phase before the program and what were you doing and etc. and everything? Yeah. 
i'll start uh, with even before graphic designing i have been a production engineering student oh okay uh, yeah yes i was in coep it is one of the best engineering colleges in mm -hmm. pune and india mm -hmm. okay but uh, it was a difficult phase for me okay mm -hmm. working on machines working for machines yeah i couldn't keep up with that monotonous life if i could say mm -hmm. and uh, i switched to graphic designing and web designing i was mostly focused on graphic designing uh, like logo designing and other uh, template designing and things like that i still uh, have those uh, digital products for sale i sell digital templates and all that uh, then uh, i started with my skincare blog mm -hmm. okay and uh, i uh, also attended content writing workshop but uh, then i thought like okay only writing is not enough writing your like people should get to read it mm -hmm. how do you do, do that okay mm -hmm. then i came across uh, uh, digital deepak's uh, youtube videos first mm -hmm. i watched few videos then i attended his uh, webinars okay then i enrolled myself for the uh, internship program and that's how my internship journey started nice so what is uh, that one thing that you learned the most from the internship program that really helped you or pushed you to pursue this career of content writing uh like i was already interested in blogging so i decided to stick to content writer as mm. a profession okay? okay like i learned a lot like uh, google ads facebook ads and everything okay but what uh, made me like uh, uh, didi has mentioned in this uh, week 3 i think creating choosing your niche mm -hmm. like that uh, week 3 video is on another dimension that at that time i was like very focused on okay i am going to do this i am going to pursue in this niche and i am going to be like uh, working as a content writer because this is something i am passionate about like this is i have knowledge about it and of course there is a huge market for it mm. so that like week 3 was a like a very game changer for me to come to this point like i have to become a content writer and i have to work as a content writer so finding the you as in what are you going to do why you are going to do that is what week 3 teaches you so yeah, yeah. i agree that I agree to that um now let me ask you about your journey so far because see uh, i think you are making some 50000 rupees a month right yeah. right now on an yes, average yes. now that is almost like a salary for most people like a month yes. salary that most people want to get a job of 50000 rupees so that is very appreciable um but it's not just about the success that you have had i want to know about the challenges that you had because any any journey has more to you know teach when there is a challenge aspect to it and those challenges teach you because those challenges brought you here right yes when you overcame them so i want to know about the challenges that you have faced or the struggles in your life and how did you overcome them the biggest struggle for me was a uh, not just in the internship was uh, in general life also was procrastination okay okay uh, you i i personally don't do things till i'm like at the deadline <laughs> okay even while submitting uh, like assignments for internship it was like i had to push myself a lot to complete the assignments to do those tasks we had given yeah, in the assignment complete how many assignments did you complete i have completed all the assignments all before of deadline all of them before deadline and okay. i'm so proud of myself for that because <laughs> i have been uh, i have taken a lot of different courses throughout my life during engineering after engineering also but this one course i have this is the only course rather i have completed plus i got I like uh, I don't know if you remember I was able to uh, top I was able to come in the top 50 I remember so I, and uh, I cracked that exam I had actually prepared for that exam no we had that MCQ wala exam so yeah that was like okay and now I can do it because I and the reason why I could uh, overcome my procrastination habit is because I uh, Uh, internship program is structured well 
we have timelines we have deadlines plus we have like a very good community to help you like a, throughout the asset so like uh, everyone was uh, uh, when we had uh, deadlines like everyone was asking like i had this question how to do this for assignment like this rethink really pushes you forward okay so having a great community was uh, another part that uh, helped me overcome my procrastination and so this was one of the biggest challenge procrastination and the other thing was like Uh, as a writer you are used to write articles something but you are not used to like pitch your services to services. your client right uh, like cold emailing to, to, to make that pitch <laughs> yeah cold email cold emailing was like a uh, very difficult for me it's not uh, like a complicated thing but it's a uh, very difficult to push myself to get there like right? no mm-hmm. uh, we use this uh, and different tools to get email ids and then we have to cold pitch them then again follow up with the, that person this was like the another second most mm-hmm. difficult for yeah. okay uh, now let me ask you the question so say for example you are i am somebody um, suppose i am a girl and i want to start writing i have a flair for expressing myself i want to let the world know that i exist that i have feelings inside me that i have thoughts that i have ideas and i have some motivation and ambition to achieve but i want to write and i want to show the world suppose what sh- where should i get started according to you according to me you should get started by having your own blog okay okay your blog helps you express yourself it helps you put your thoughts in like a uh, manner that others will also able to uh, relate it okay so having a blog is first thing mm-hmm. okay then but how will people know about your blog okay then mm-hmm. then comes the part like uh, getting people know about your blog like you can use uh, social media you can use communities there are uh, different communities across different channels okay based on niche like right? that's i think uh, these two things will help you having a blog and having a community to share your expression to express yourself and uh, do content writers need to wear glasses because both of us have <laughs> content writers both of us wear glasses oh it's not compulsory <laughs> i'm kidding I'm just... i think that like, people like uh, we tend to spend more time reading and on like the uh, electronic using the electronic devices that's why i think your video is stuck uh, can you just switch off your uh, switch on your video once again i think my voice okay so no problem <laughs> i just made a light of that moment <laughs> <laughs> everybody has glasses and writers and readers they are like yeah. close work for a uh, yes yes that's right in a way in a way glasses become mandatory <laughs> uh, yeah and uh, i think it uh, also help uh, protects our eyes from the blue light so it's better to use them and i'm almost blind without my glasses so i i don't go anywhere without my glasses <laughs> <laughs> i i can relate to that anyway so tell me about your daily life like how do, how does a daily life of a content writer look like it is uh, i'm an it is very normal and monotonous life for me like okay. i'm uh, not very outgoing person i'm very selectively social person mm-hmm. so i have very uh, few people that i actually go and meet otherwise then uh, this before the pandemic also like i had like very this simple life okay but other than that as a content writer my day mostly looks like uh, writing articles structuring them most of the time i spend researching them than actually writing them okay and then uh, i uh, spend like a two and two to half an hour in the morning writing articles okay and then my evening time is mostly like uh, i like to keep it very uh, smooth and no heavy work so i spend that into reading and then i have a, a 
Instagram account for my skincare blog also. So I spend my evening time mostly interacting with uh, other skincare bloggers and my audience in uh, on that Instagram account. Mm, nice. Um, yes, you were saying something. Yes. So my morning is more basically for my content writing work, and evening is mostly for my blogging work. Awesome. Yes. Um, you know, I wouldn't call this a monotonous life because I have a very similar life. I don't, uh, you know, go out too much and I don't like to gel with a lot of people. I have a very selective set of people that I want to interact with. And I think, you know, it's like, I personally feel this is my view. It can be different for people. But I think from our point of view, it's more like we spend our time very wisely because we know that is very precious. We want to learn more things. And I think, uh, what, what is your opinion? Don't you think content writing is very, very beautiful? Why? Because it not just is a, is a profession where you actually deliver a service. You get to learn a lot in, in that, you know, uh, rush of completing that project. Because say, suppose you have to write a, an article on strategic management. And when you go and research about it, you get multiple perspectives about that same topic apart from what you have in your head. Even though you know something about that topic, still you learn a lot. If you don't know about that topic, then of course you learn a lot anyway. You know, that is, in my opinion, the beauty of content writing. What do you think? What is your opinion? Yes, exactly. Like I have learned a lot about uh, my niche before, uh, uh, like after uh, actually working as a content writer than I had before uh, when I had uh, my own blog. Okay, I've come across different beautiful brands that I didn't know even existed before okay. <laughs> uh, like in mostly international brands because i uh, prefer using indian brands for my skincare and uh, for my makeup also but because i started working in this niche i came across different international brands like they are also cruelty free and vegan okay wow. so, uh, so this is mostly my thing okay uh, using plant based ingredients and all those things so i get to research about these things because I'm a content writer and I'm writing on these topics for my clients. Okay. Before I had uh, my, when I had my blog, I used to write only specific uh, products on Indian skincare brands also. Only. So that's how uh, I got to research a lot because I'm working as a content writer. Wonderful. And I think, you know, that is something that I really, really like about this profession as a content writer. Because apart from all the work that you do, apart from all the connections that you build, you get to learn so much about everything. In fact, in your daily life, it has a direct carryover effect, right? Don't you think yeah. so? Yes, exactly. And this has also inspired me to uh, take my journey on uh, being a vegan. I, I have oh. been a vegetarian all my life. Same. But yeah, yeah. But being a vegan is very different than being a vegetarian. Okay. I know. So yeah. So I have taken this uh, on journey after I started writing as a content writer because uh, most of the bands that I write for are vegan and they have this beautiful uh, like uh, philosophy of theirs. Like I have come across them and now I'll I'm give you the same pin. I, I would like to give you a virtual same pinch on that because um, when I was writing for a lot of you know uh, topics and niches, um, I also discovered a lot of, you know, vegan products in food sector and in cosmetics, etc. for men. And then I was like, you know, vegan is something that is really going to help. I mean, I'm not somebody who follows trends per se, but the fact that if something is vegan, then that means there is less animal exploitation, right? And that is what, you know, uh, in, motivates me to try that. But I agree, it's very difficult. So I'll try to get there eventually. <laughs> Yes, and uh, as we are living in an Indian household, almost every other product that we use has a ghee or butter or like, no, <laughs> dairy products, okay? So that is a challenging thing, but I hope so. I eventually will get there. Nice. Okay, um, tell me about, so suppose if I have to pitch a client and there is this aspect of negotiation, can you throw some light on it? How... What would you advise on the negotiation aspect? How did you overcome that hurdle, initial hurdle of negotiation? What things to keep in mind? How to negotiate? Okay. Uh, 
the basic uh, thing i would uh, like to highlight here is when you are pitching to a client or when you are in the negotiation part always pitch in the way that uh, you are trying to help them right highlight this part that how my service will help you uh, better your service right? your clients you are providing your ser your service to your clients and your client is providing his services to his client okay so your uh, part here is to mention that how my service is going to help you be become a better client a better service provider to your client so this part uh, if you focus on this while pitching to your clients it will uh, help them right, to negotiate okay. better and suppose your client potential client not your client because <laughs> he has not become your client yet he asks you that you know they don't have the budget that you know we are looking for something like uh, less expensive how how should i respond okay this is like uh, i might come as rude but i like i say bye bye to such clients okay mm -hmm. i have uh, uh, i have been i have been a part of uh, some communities also like uh, and uh, where content writers are like uh, get job and uh, projects uh, and i've seen them will like getting paid like 25 paise per word 30 paise per word and and i've seen people actually commenting their interest their interest and this is not only on communities of facebook i have also seen this happening on linkedin true okay yeah well like it takes the same amount even if i'm working in the same niche i have uh, to do the research for even if you for a one article or two article it takes the same amount of effort from my side so right. why should i lower my prices okay right. so yeah in fact so, it feels very painful when you when you you know uh, work at such levels because yeah. um, i mean i have fortunately i've never worked at that level but when i when i was so when i i'll just like to share in my part before i ask you more questions so when i first started writing i would write for 1 rupee a word then i got it up to 2 rupees a word then i went up to 3 3.5 rupees a word and then i started you know charging as per projects not for word so i used to imagine at 1 rupee a word i wrote a 2 2500 word article i earned 2500 rupees my first article i was like how do these people at 25 paise 30 paise a word work i mean you put in so many hours of work even though you're learning that's separate but still you're not getting that roi out of it in terms of revenue yeah how long can i survive how many projects do i need to do to get to that income level It's so painful, isn't it? Yes, it's so painful. And uh, while you are writing uh, one article, if, if you are getting paid like twenty-five paisa, you are still putting the same effort. You are still right. uh, like you have to work for like twelve hours or maybe twenty-four hours for to get that article. Okay, so why? Uh, and not just in content writing, I have this philosophy for my life also. Do not lower your standards for. someone else to be like be comfortable with you okay? that's why I, generally i don't work with such clients one one competing thought to it that i would like to put in is don't you think that even though 25 paise is a little very less actually mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who are just not equipped to charge 1 rupee a word don't you think so yeah the reason could be from my point of view is like there own insecurities or low self esteem like okay mera to itna hi banta hai like when you think like okay i deserve one rupee per word then you start pitching in that uh, tone to your clients like i deserve one rupee per word i am putting efforts for to be paid that much mm -hmm. so if when you have really that uh, self esteem that self confidence of pitching you will get such clients um i agree to that but uh, what i meant by the question was a lot of times i see content writers who are just not able to write properly i mean grammar is all over the place spelling mm. mistakes uh, there is no editing in the work that is very surprising to me like how can you not edit your work how did you even not go through your sentence sometimes what i see i hired a content writer and uh, she actually spun the whole content using content spinner fine i understood that and then uh, so in this document she actually you know got other friend of hers to write that document 
and before delivering it to me she did not even review the work mm-hmm. i'm so surprised when content writers don't even review their work and you know when i say that that is what i meant when i say that a lot of people are not you know equipped to that level that they should be charging at least 1 rupee a word because see 1 rupee a word is the base minimum but that also means that you need to take your skills to that level of 1 rupee a word right if you if you are delivering a work that is not complete or incomplete or half complete it's disservice actually right what is your opinion on this yes there uh, i have seen such people i have like been around uh, in uh, one of the communities but then the uh, like uh, we have so much easy tools like grammarly okay you can easily edit and grammar like correct your grammar in such i don't understand why people are so lazy about even editing and writing about grammar like it's so easy to edit the articles right but maybe it's their laziness you know um there is this quote by stephen king you must have heard about it to write as human to edit is divine <laughs> the moment i read that i was like you know i fell in love with editing because you write a 10 word sentence and then you edit it and then you bring it down to six words yes it feels like oh shit so, why did i i wrote I, four, I, 10 words my four words went away but actually your six word sentence will sound and will read more you know at, appealing than actually those 10 words what do you think yes Uh, i also like to write and read short sentences like i personally feel that short sentences have more impact on oh. readers mind okay they will uh, be more relatable to your audience because right. uh, yeah a lot of people these days are like only skimming through the content right especially if it is a written content so having short but very impactful uh, blogs or articles will uh, help you connect with your audience more very true nice a uh, very valid point great i mean uh, you know so many interesting thoughts and ideas that you gave so can you tell me like when i start working on a project how should i decide that when i should pitch for a new customer suppose i have already got a project okay and i'm busy working but i have got an offer from a friend that hey okay this one of this person this lead or this new referral i'm sending it to you um he needs or she needs content writing services by somebody so why don't you pitch how should i decide whether i should make a pitch or whether first i should complete my job because i can only work at one article at a time right with 100% focus so i want to know about your approach how do you take things up yeah if it's in the same niche i would go with that second client also okay, okay? okay. yeah but if it's in the other niche like uh, if it's in the like i work for beauty and cosmetic if it's about finance or marketing like that will take more of my time and energy that will require more research from my side then in that case i would uh, either hold put that client on hold or i ask someone to help right? okay we have different uh, we have beautiful communities like in our ddip also and other than that also so i'll do either of this okay and what is your view on arbitrage so suppose i started working and i am say suppose i'm i'm just giving you a hypothetical situation because i'm coming up with questions based on what i would you know face when i started working Mm-hmm. and i you know wanted to let know other people's opinion so i am getting this opportunity to talk to you so <laughs> i'm asking yes. so how would you approach suppose i'm making 25000 a month mm-hmm. and my expenses and everything suppose are 20000 a month and i'm saving 5000 rupees a month okay mm-hmm. now when i say 20000 it also includes my extra expenses now i have spare 5000 rupees a month do you think it is a wise idea to hire another content writer and who can help me as an assistant for research or at least for writing the draft or the outline what do you think or should i use a tool or should i hire somebody what what is your opinion okay well, this uh, is a very subjective like uh, how you manage your finances okay but uh, you can do either you can hire a, you can like 
get a help you do not to hire a content writer completely like okay and uh, you can ask for help to like uh, for a specific uh, like how do i structure these and that kind of things you did not to hire a, for a com- writing a complete article yeah that's what i said like you know for yeah. an outline of at least for the research part yes, yes. so that it can you know cut down my time yeah. yes Or, yeah great <laughs> you know so many crazy questions that i just you know uh, because i just recall when i was working as a content writer i had these questions now i'm not working as a freelance content writer um pitching clients and everything because i'm busy with the work and i enjoy it i actually all of these things but i had these questions back then back then <laughs> so uh, great uh, thank you so much uh, shweta just last few words what would you uh like to say to the audience the people who will be watching this video especially girls of your age who are starting out or girls a little younger than you who want to get started with this and who want to make name of their own fame of their own money on their own what are the set of advices that you would tell them from your life or from your finances how to manage it everything like okay Uh, one advice i would give if you are starting as uh, working as a content writer or digital marketer or whatever it is as a freelancer be very specific about your niche okay have a one niche be specific about it uh, work on it for one year or one and half year then explore uh, other niches or then expand your work okay sticking to a one niche has helped me a lot to uh, page clients and to do different types of work okay and uh, this will also when you know what you need not to do or when you don't want to do this you will be more cl- clear about what you want to do okay the, so that's why being specific about your niche is very important and uh, second uh, thing would be be patient be patient with your work okay Uh, you won't get result in your like your first two months or four months or maybe even six months fine still stick to your niche still uh, improvise your work but still stick with your niche do more research like communicate with uh, more people build your network that will help you get more clients and like be more and have a third point would be have self confidence and have higher self esteem only then you will be able to pitch clients only then you will be able to negotiate with your clients so these are my like three advice for awesome you. um i would also like to add one thing because i just it just dawned upon me yes. um in ddip i learned something and i applied it and that has saved me almost 3 hours every day so that is something that i would like to suggest to everybody girls and boys and men and women because saving 3 hours is a real like you know wealth that you're getting every single day yes. so in a year's time you're getting 1000 hours in 1000 hours you can do a ton of things so uh, what i really learned from ddip my own experience was week 6 social media marketing how it mm-hmm. gives you a perspective on social media marketing because as a content writer you will be pitching clients on social media and then it only takes a few seconds to scroll up the feed and then you get busy and sucked in it so week 6 video is going to be pivotal for i think any content writer because or newbie content writer because they'll understand what is the place of social media in marketing how to go about it that you can use it yet save time it has literally saved me 3 to 4 hours every single day week 7 uh, i learned how to how to generate leads for my business and then in week 12 i learned about sales how to pitch you know customers yes so i would like to say that you know especially of all of the weeks at least focus on week 6 because that is where you learn how to save those 3 4 hours because if you get 3 hours every single day you can pitch 3 clients every single day yeah you know yeah. that yeah. means yeah. more sales potential sales yes exactly so uh, that's just my view that it just you know crossed my mind so yeah yeah great uh, any final thoughts shweta uh, how was your experience with ddip ddip was uh, 
as i already told you was very exciting and thrilling for me everything about ddip uh, it was a uh, i could say that uh, it was a very life transforming journey for me because uh, what i was doing before ddip now what i am doing after ddip is completely different like two like, these are completely two different lives i am living okay that's why i <laughs> yes that's why i said like it is a life transforming journey for me and uh, uh, you said like uh, week 6 is like was had a very uh, impact on your life for me it was like week 3 right okay. oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, finding your niche and then uh, like how to find your niche and this whole ikigai thing that uh, dd has said this uh, that has completely changed like uh, then after uh, my journey has become more interesting right yeah. wonderful so nice to hear and you know this is going to motivate so many young girls uh, and women who want to make a name of their own build up their you know rapo uh, and reputation in the market make some revenue or for themselves their own livelihood and have a great career so thank you shweta you are an inspiration in your own way a very beautiful way and uh, i wish you all the best keep making more progress and become a big success okay and uh, keep inspiring us <laughs> yeah. thank you divya it was really nice talking to you and uh, you as a mentor you have helped us a lot like you have pushed us to do assignments and that's why we could uh, do all these assignments you have helped us with your like q and a sessions yeah you have solved like every little like you have answered every little every silly questions of us and that has like uh, kept us all together and through this journey thank you so thank, thank you. you thank you so much for all your support throughout uh, the ddip and even after uh, ddip thank you and uh, that's very sweet of you and you know thank you for putting up with my sarcasms <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know it's always to uplift people i never use sarcasm to demean people it's always to uplift people to at least force them to think because that's how my teachers used to teach me back in the day anyways uh, that's about it from my end and thank you shweta for joining this call and spending 45 minutes with me it was wonderful talking great inspiration and great journey and i wish you all the best for the future thank you bye bye bye